so far in this bowl and we will wait for some thumbs up or for you guys to tell us that you're ready for us to move on. We have two eggs, one quarter cup water, one cup milk, and then I just took a whisk. We don't have to use any special equipment for this. We'll just use a whisk or a spoon today. Of course, you're welcome to use a mixer at home if you'd like, but if you don't have one, it's fine. All right, we've still got a couple more people coming in. So Mark's back, and uh, Tristan uh -huh. is back, and Nina and Abby. Hey, Tristan. Hi, Abby and Nina. All right, so if everybody uh, is kind of up to speed, um, go ahead and give us a thumbs up, and we'll get moving forward. All right, good. So my next step, I have about a quarter cup, I just eyeballed it, but about a quarter cup of butter. If you um, got the block of butter in the kit, it's prob you probably have a quarter cup left, I think, if my math is correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt it. Um, I'm gonna use this glass bowl and just melt it in the microwave. Um, and you can also melt it on the stove top. And uh, we'll, while that's happening, we'll go ahead and start putting the dry goods in, because the butter, we won't put in until we put the dry goods in and mix it and everything's mixed and then we'll add the butter. So go ahead and melt a quarter cup and we'll come back here and put the dry goods in. All right, so for dry goods, we're gonna just add uh, one cup of flour and a quarter cup of sugar. So if you already used your uh, one cup measuring cup and it's the only one you have, make sure you rinse it and dry it. Uh, otherwise the flour will stick. Um, and same with a quarter cup of sugar. So I'm just gonna dry my one quarter cup of my sugar. So Melissa's saying a uh, quarter cup, the recipe said three tablespoons. Yes, but um, you're going to want a little bit for your pan. So if you do a little bit extra, um, then you'll have some for your pan. And then vanilla was? Uh... Vanilla was one teaspoon. So in the bowl so far, we have one cup of milk, two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter cup of water. And then I'm guessing that everyone's got that mixed. So um, just leave your butter aside. We do want it totally melted, um, but just leave it aside for now. And then we're gonna do one cup of flour. Just grab my flour. Oops. And you just want it nice and level. You could pop that right in there. And then um, one quarter cup sugar. So I'm gonna grab my sugar. And nice and level. Again, with your mixer or I'm just gonna use my whisk you can use a spoon I'm just gonna take a minute and mix it up good make sure you get all the flour off the side and in this case you don't want any the brownies we said a, a little bit of lumps was okay but in your crepes you don't want any lumps so it does take a probably a minute or two to just make sure you get to that point
I'm feeling pretty good about my batter. Let me know how everyone else is doing. Do you think we're ready to add the butter? So when everybody's ready for the butter, go ahead and start giving some thumbs up and we'll uh, move forward. And it's gonna be um, three tablespoons of butter, melted. And just make sure it's 100% melted, no chunks. And then you're just gonna mix that really well too. And you're probably thinking, boy, this crepe batter looks really thin. And if that's what you're thinking, that's a good thing. And you've probably made the recipe correctly because a good crepe is really thin. Unlike the pancake mix, if you make pancake mix, it's kind of thick and... Right. The crepes should be very delicate. And I'm feeling really good about mine. Let me know. I'm going to go ahead and start my um, the heat underneath I would say you want to be maybe medium high on your pan. So go ahead and way to spend Friday night making crepes with everyone. So as it starts to heat up a little bit, you can add some of that butter that you retained. What kind of heat would you uh, recommend? We have an electric stove. Yeah, so I would say medium high. And you just want to add enough butter that um, you can get it all around the pan. And I found this ladle um, in my drawer, but I think it's probably an ounce and a half or two ounces. But what you're going for is um, to pour enough in that you're almost covering the bottom of the pan, but not completely. And I'm just swirling my butter around. You don't want the butter burning, but you want it melted. Does everyone feel ready to pour a crepe? Make their first crepe? So maybe I'll come in close for this one. Okay. And I know there was some questions about like what kind of spatula, what kind of pan. Um, I really don't think, I think crepes are pretty forgiving and you can just use what you have. I'm gonna, I grab this spatula just your basic old spatula. Um, and I have these pans that we make omelets and eggs in at home, but if you have a bigger one, that's fine. Um, and so I'm just gonna uh, just put some crepe batter in so that it's almost as big as my crepe pan, but not quite. And then I'm just gonna use my wrist to kind of, I think I took it off the heat for a bit more. And I would tell you that if your first one doesn't come out great, they never do. The first one's never the best. So I can tell by looking at it that I didn't, I didn't have my uh, pan hot enough, but I still think this will come out just fine. So I'm just gonna continue to just swirl it around while I can. And so I'm gonna let it cook until I see the edges curl up a little bit. If they start to come away from the pan, I know I'm ready to flip it. And so now the um, pan is becoming more uh, the temperature that it, it should have been. And as much as I want to flip it right now, I'm still going to give it a minute till I, I see those edges start to come away from the pan. Oh, I 
think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a go in a bit. And I think this crepe looks okay. And I think it's my first one of the batch, so it's not the best. It's not gonna be my best one. Always seems like you gotta let the pan heat up to a certain amount, but it won't get there unless you cook the first one. That's right. And then also, um, I think I may have had a bit too much butter in my pan, but I didn't want it to stick. And so I can see it kind of cooking around the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one and I'm just gonna transfer it onto a plate. And I'm gonna um, go ahead and pour this one while the pan's nice and hot. Yeah, that's more the sound I like. And then again, I'm just gonna use my wrist and get that batter all the way around. So really any pan with a little lip on it is going to do just fine. And I think we'll find this one cooks a lot faster. So Mark wants to know if you could use olive oil instead of butter for the pan. Yes. Sure. Is there I any tips? Is there any difference? No, I think I'm, but I love butter and I think butter, um, you kind of get that buttery taste in your crepe. So if you have butter, I would use it, but no troubles. Uh, you just don't want it to stick. Oh, that one cooked up nice. Yeah. I'm just gonna transfer that one on, and you could put it right on top. And they don't stick together like you would think they would. Yeah, they don't. And in this case, I think I'm just gonna add a little more butter. Make sure my butter doesn't burn. It's never a great taste. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just add one more. And so then I'm just gonna use my wrist. You don't want to put too much batter because you want your crepes to be really thin. Has anyone else got any crepes on their plate yet? I think they got their hands full right now. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Yep, we're getting some thumbs up now. Yep, so this one I'm going to go ahead and flip. So as I'm noticing as we go along, the, they're cooking much faster. The pan is getting like completely heated. So um, you need to keep an eye on them. Right. Because it's going to be fast. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this one on the plate. And you might have heard me say this earlier, but Pat and I had uh, crepes with the homemade Nutella and peanut butter and banana earlier today. Um, and we're going to have them for dinner too. <laughs> and then tomorrow we're going on diet. <laughs> It's just about all in the wrist. That yeah, was cooking really fast. Yeah, I think the butter got a little brown. That one. So Brian's asking how many does it make? We think it makes about six. Six uh, to eight, I think. Six to eight in this size. We're on four, number four right now. 
And I think we probably have enough for two or three left. Maybe four. Oh, I actually meant to ask everyone before we started if I show you how to make crepes, so you promise still to come to Perk on Main. <laughs> I don't want to put myself out of business. Should have signed a, a contract. Hi, George. You see, George just came on. Hi, George. And Libby. Hi, guys. on a size but again just it's all that wrist action just getting a uh, your batter even and around the edge and thin so Janice says she missed the recipe part um, this will be posted uh, after the video and then you could just refer back to the uh, Facebook post. yeah so I Janice I put a recipe card um, on our Facebook earlier today so you can just grab that um, it has instructions, but then also you will save this video so you can watch it if you have any other questions. So see Pat right there how it's just getting cooked around the edges. Mm -hmm. That's exactly when you want to flip it. That's perfect. I think this is going to be the best one yet. And if your crepe breaks, don't worry about it. Um, it's still going to taste good. And just a little extra powdered sugar. No one will know. <laughs> I'm still going to uh, skip adding more butter and add more batter. Probably depends on your pan too. You gotta know your pan. Yeah. Whether you're gonna need the butter or not. Right, you kinda look at it if it looks shiny. And then, um, also how did that last one come out? Did it come out just fine or was it a little sticky? So one, two, three, four, five, so this is six. So I'm gonna call this an eight crepe recipe. Now I have an answer for that question. Now I think my pan is actually a perfect temperature for crepes. Um, and I have it just, just over medium, but everyone's uh, stove top is so different. How, how are the crepes coming out? So as far as the, uh, the Nutella that we made, should we warm it up a little bit? I think so. I would stir it really well and warm it up just a little bit and then stir it really well. How many seconds do you think? I would start with 15. Is that eight or nine? Uh, this is number eight. Uh, this might be number seven, I think. And then we'll get at least eight out of it. Oh, you were, you were forecasting by the amount in there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And you could also use um, the same recipe and you just change it a little bit if you wanted a savory one. Is that yeah. correct? So if you want a savory, just I would just take out the vanilla and the sugar and then add a bit of salt. But I've had sweet crepe batter with savory stuff and it tastes just fine. You like it, yes. Yeah. Barbara says each one of hers is getting better. 
That's great. So our piano is coming up to speed. Mine too. I see Diane St. John just came on. Hey, Diane. And so I haven't added any more butter for a while. You like to live on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> Be able to get nine out of this, I think. Maybe ten if you use the uh, squeegee at the end. That's right. Maybe. Let's see. This one I went a little heavy on the batter. I'm not sure what. I think you could probably get ten. You think so? Yeah. are out there watching this is another really great thing uh, for Mother's Day if you're thinking about it um, even if you aren't able to use the stove I know you can make the batter so and um, enjoy it afterwards yeah and then have an adult make it on the stove or watch you and I know uh, mom or dad grandma grandpa will be really happy Going for one more. Yeah, maybe two. I think Bentley's ready for a crepe. Yeah. He's getting a little restless down yeah. there. so tempting to try to flip it early but it doesn't always work out that well I know people have their favorite crepes at perk but um, there's so many things that you could put in them maybe you could give a few examples oh sure so if you have some cheese um, in your fridge like cheddar and apple would be good. You could slice a little bit of apple and melt some cheddar. I'm just trying to think of things people might have. Any kind of fruit, strawberries. Um, if you put a little butter and sugar in there uh, with your strawberries, it'll be delicious. Um, cinnamon, sugar, and butter is uh, our Katie's um, favorite. And um, banana with the Nutella we made. Banana and brown sugar and butter is Pat's favorite. Um, Grace has a crepe named after her. That's a yogurt and fruit, yogurt, bananas, and berries. Um, so there's like so many combinations uh, that you could do. Lemon, which we should do tonight because I think we have some lemon, Pat. Oh, yeah. So oh, I think I got 10 out of this, 9 or 10. And this is my last one. Oh, and some blueberries if anybody has blueberries left from the muffins. Yeah. That would be good. Just powdered sugar. You should definitely try at least one with just powdered sugar in it. Um, just to really test like how good is your crepe, but I think you're gonna find it's delicious. So Anne's asking what's a good way to store the extra ones. So you can, um, make, I would go ahead and make them because you have your pan out, but you could just store the batter. Uh, but if you just um, store them in like a, a glass tup or a Tupperware or a glass container, or you can um, put them. Or you could put them in your fridge, or you could freeze them. They freeze really well. And would, would they be uh, laid out, or is it okay to fold them? Um, so if you put it, I don't, I've actually never frozen them. I just have heard that people have done it. Um, but I think I might put a little parchment in between them if I did that. But in the fridge, I think you could just stack them up and put them in there, and they'll come apart for you. Would it matter if it was folded over? It would still come apart. Uh, no, I think you can also fold it over. Good. Yeah. So 
So this is my last crepe. And then I'm gonna start eating some crepes probably, but I'd love to know how everyone's doing on theirs if, you, if you're able to type. I could get that for you. Okay. If you want to stay and uh, talk. Yeah, and then I think I might um, heat up some of this Nutella. We talked it out. So I'm going to heat my um, Nutella, homemade Nutella we made yesterday up for 15 seconds. Pretty nice and soft. And then let's see what else we have. Um, we have some pecans back. Mm. We have some chocolate chips if you wanted. Um, oh, the blueberries. I like that idea. And I bet we have some. Syrup. This is the same maple syrup that we serve at Perk in the Red and Haddam Quarter in Durham. I think we got powder, uh, powdered sugar too. Yeah, we do. And then we also have some delicious honey. And we get, we've been getting our honey from Three Sisters Farm and they're in Essex. So I think we should try one with honey. And get a little powdered sugar. Go ahead and make you one. Yeah. Okay. And so with this size, when we talked about a little bit earlier, um, a roll, a fold, what would you suggest? Um, just yeah, so I think you can really be artistic with it, but uh, we, Pat and I were finding earlier today that um, rolling them and just eating them with our hands worked out great. It's kind of like a mm. taquito. <laughs> so. Another plate? Uh, sure. But maybe I'll do a little syrup in this one, I think. Okay. Maybe make a couple and then. Uh, because yeah. we had the uh, practice today, I think everyone else might still be making this. Make your plate look pretty. Mm -hmm. And powdered sugar. Yeah, I like it. And that one, because it's maple syrup, you might want to use a fork. Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Maybe we could fold it over at the end like a burrito and then kind of keep it in there like a Chipotle burrito. Mmm, that's true. <laughs> oh, you also could put peanut butter? Yep. How about some of those pecans? Sounds good. Works. Nutella pecan, does that sound good? Sounds great. Oh, the lemon? Oh, yeah, that's 
있습니다. 
But since it's not, we just go for it. We're just gonna have it. <laughs> That's delicious. Well, I don't know how anybody can't enjoy these tonight. I think it's going to kick off the weekend just perfect. Yeah, hopefully it, well, I would say hopefully it's following dinner and not dinner, but for us it is dinner, so. Yeah. It's Friday night. Yeah. It's a quarantine type situation that anything goes. <laughs> so this is just Nutella and banana, and that's actually the whole reason why Perk exists. This is in Paris. I fell in love with Nutella banana crates. And I started making them when I came home. My sister-in-law, Teresa, got me a book of how to make crepes. And then the idea for Perk was born. Fantastic. Yeah. You tell the banana. Still my favorite. Well, there's so many people that are glad for that. Myself included. Mm -hmm. Can you go on? Well, we gotta try the one with the oh, pecans because okay. we haven't tried that one yet today. You first. All right. And I'm just gonna check in with everyone, make sure there's no questions, and I'll check on my computer over here. So now, after everybody's having these crepes. How long will it take for everyone to fall asleep? <laughs> Not long. <sighs> Actually, crates are nice because they're so light. Oh my gosh, someone, Hannah said uh, she loved Paris, but our crates are better. Which is amazing. Eileen and uh, Addie are saying they came out good. Betty said they're delicious. I think everyone's good. I think so. Yeah. Well, Pat and I will be self-conscious eating all of these in front of you, so we'll say good night. Thanks so much for joining us this week. Thanks. Bye. Hope to see everyone back at Perk soon.